Hey, good morning, everyone. Just taking advantage of this cold morning to do a little um, fly control, spreading these predatory wasps from Spalding Labs. Um, something that I've done, something that I've done uh, the last couple years now. So I've been doing it. This is this will be my third year doing these wasps, and I really do feel like they work. Um, one thing oh, you can see, we already got some fly larvae going in this one. So this manure this is actually a good this is a good shot so this manure patty is in a strip that was one let's see one two three so this is a three day old strip so the cows were in this strip in the pasture three days ago and as you can see the fly larva is already hatched and crawling around so unfortunately these predatory wasps aren't going to aren't going to do anything at this point. Um, one, because not all of them have hatched, and that's what they look like. Um, those little black cylinders are actually wasp eggs. So some of them have hatched. That's kind of when you know it's time to release them, when you've got, you know, 12 to 24 flying around inside the bag. But the majority of those, those uh, black eggs have not hatched yet. So they're probably still a day or two away. But how they work is uh, they hatch, and these are basically mama mama wasps mama predators and they fly to the manure patties they crawl through the manure patties and then they lay eggs in the fly basically the fly egg so before the fly hatches and becomes a larva like it is here um <clears throat> these predatory wasps fly they lay their eggs inside that uh egg sac of the fly and then as the, the life cycle of the predatory wasp is a lot quicker, so then those predatory wasp eggs hatch and they feed on the fly larva egg until they become adults. And then they fly, you know, they crawl out of the manure patty and fly away. So by having the fly larva already crawling around in here, I've unfortunately missed the window to basically attack anything, um, you know, more than two days old. <laughs> Which is fine, uh, you know, it's it's a game you play every year trying to control flies and, and these predatory wasps, for me at least, only show up really about once a month. I'll get them two times during the month during the busy fly season, which for us is usually uh, July and August. Um, so I'll get, I'll get two shipments a month or I'll get a double shipment. But yeah, spreading, spreading the fly larva, or excuse me, spreading the predatory wasps on this manure patty and, and really any manure patty in this three day old strip is going to be a waste at this point. Now, the, uh, the predatory wasp larva, the eggs will still hatch and you'll get, you'll get, um, the adult female fly predator flying out of there, but they can only fly about 200 feet on, on a good, you know, a calm, a calm day. So any wind at all. Yeah, this one's got Oh, look at all those larva. This one's loaded full of fly larva. So real quick, one thing I'll do is like on this thing, like look at that, man. I should carry this over to the chicken tractor and let the chickens pick at these dudes. I might do that. Got a little wolf spider crawling around too. But So one thing I'll do is, you know, obviously I'm not going to do it for every manure patty in this in this day three strip, but... You know, you can open these things up. The The sunlight will really dry out those larvae. That'll help kill off some of the larvae. Obviously, natural predators, birds, bugs, spiders, all sorts of stuff now that doesn't normally tunnel through manure um, will come and eat, eat that fly larva. So I guess that's one good thing. That's, and that's kind of why I'm doing this video because I know some people say that these fly predators don't work. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot more. They say these fly predators don't work because they're using them all. And you can see how wet this manure patty is too. So that, you know, that's just, that's perfect breeding ground for these, for this fly larva. So if I can open this up, expose it to the wind, expose it to the sun, like I said, expose it to natural predators, that's going to help take care of, that's going to help take care of uh, these flies that have already hatched and are in larval stage that these predator, that these fly predators can't get to. So I'll probably spend I'll probably spend some time walking this day three strip and 
opening up all of these. Uh, so let's see, what was I getting at? <clears throat> oh yeah, these, these fly predators can only fly about 200 feet. So even if I were to spread them in this strip right now, uh, they will still fly away and they'll fly, they will find fresh manure and they'll find fresh fly eggs to lay, to lay into. But the further, the further away I get from where the cows are at now and where the cows are going to be at, you know, tomorrow, later today, tomorrow, and then possibly even the next day, the less of a chance that these fly predators are actually going to have a chance to do anything because they're just, they're too far away. And that's, that's about 200, 250 feet on a good day. These things are tiny. They're like little gnats. And so if there is any, any wind whatsoever, um, they won't be able to fly far at all. So <clears throat> I just try and spread them. I just try and spread them, um, you know, where the cows, the cows were at the day before, um, maybe two days before where the cows are at today. So I'm going to save some of this bag and I'm going to wait till the cows move out of here this afternoon. They're going to be in this second half of the strip. So then I'll wait, I'll spread the fly predators, you know, once manure gets dropped and the cows aren't in here as much, <clears throat> I'll spread fly predators in here. And then that's basically going to cover me for the rest of this pasture. The other thing I, I do right now when I'm in this front pasture, because again, up there by the barn is their water and where a lot of their mineral is at. I'm going to make sure I save some of this bag and spread fly predators up there tomorrow. Um, or excuse me, spread fly predators up there today, just because there's a lot of manure up there in all stages of, you know, decomposition. Um, and it's just where the, the cows hang out naturally. And, and not all flies will lay eggs in manure. This tree line here, you know, technically all that vegetation is on the, the neighbor's side. So I can't hop over and, and trim that up. So um, I think it's, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's, I think it's like, uh, well, there's face flies. I think face flies will lay their eggs in other places, you know, rotting vegetation. I've even heard you know, rotting fence posts, a face fly will lay its egg in there. So I obviously can't spread these fly predators in a rotting fence post, but um, horn, horn flies, I think, are the ones that uh, reproduce in manure. So the horn flies are the biting ones, the ones that are really bad. Now, face flies suck just as much because, you know, they can, they can cause pink eye. Um, but the horn flies are the ones that'll, that'll land on your cow's backs, will land on the stomachs and the legs, and they're just constantly taking little bites. They're taking little basically little sucks of blood, little chunks of blood. Um, you know, I can't remember what the figure is, but it's like thousands of times a day, you know, um, when you, when you multiply that out by how many flies are on your animal's back. So the horn flies are, are, you know, all that head throwing you see right there. Uh, she's trying to get the horn flies off of her back. So, uh, spread these things in manure and I know they say if, if you read the directions on these they say they don't you know you don't need to put them in manure you don't need to um, give them something to like they don't eat manure right so you don't need to give them something to eat quote unquote or put them in manure but this was after I watched Greg Judy do this and like I said this is my third year of using fly predators Greg Judy tried these earlier this year um, <clears throat> and in one of his videos where he was showing his interns spreading them, they were putting them in, in manure. And, and I started thinking, you know, these, these egg, uh, pods, we'll call them actually are big targets for birds, birds and spiders. And just like any, anything else, you know, a, a, uh, a insect egg pod is going to be eaten up by whatever finds it. So in the years past, I was spreading these out. I was dumping these around manure piles, whether or not there was tall grass there. And, you know, the cows have already moved through an area. So uh, chances are the grass isn't, isn't super tall where I'm putting it. I have a feeling I lost a lot of, a lot of uh, fly predators just from um, natural, natural predators because I wasn't hiding those egg pods. So after watching him do that this year, I decided I was gonna I was gonna break open a, a manure pat. I was gonna dump these things in there and then cover them back up. And I really feel like it worked this year uh, for two reasons. Why? One, because my flies up until about a month ago, up until about August, 
our, our flies were not bad out here at all. And I was talking to neighbors and they were having pink eye outbreaks. They were having a hell of a time with their flies and we just weren't. And <clears throat> I really felt like there were two things I changed this year. One was spreading these, these uh, fly predators in manure and covering them up and not leaving them exposed. I was doing it early in the morning like I'm doing now. Um, if you do it, you know, middle of the day when the sun is bright, it just, it's, they say it's harder for them to find their way. Um, you know, they get picked off by predators a lot easier because, you know, birds are out uh, during the middle of the day and you can see those egg pods. So I, I would wait until cool mornings like I'm doing right now. <clears throat> and then the other big thing that I was doing in the years past that I feel like really affected affected the effectiveness of these fly predators was mowing. So <clears throat> during the July and August time frame when the flies really are the worst and I was getting double shipments of these fly predators, after I moved the cows off of each strip for the day, I would come through and mow it. Either, you know, the day after or a few days after I moved the cows off the strip, I'd come through and mow it. And obviously, no doubt, I was probably killing a bunch of the fly predators that I was putting out because I was mowing over them. They can't fly fast at all, so they can't get out of the way of the mower. Uh, I was running over the manure patties, which breaks them open, exposes them to sunlight. They dry out, which, yes, kills the fly larva, but it also just killed the fly predator that laid its eggs in there. It kills, you know, it kills their eggs. So... I actually wasn't going to order these fly predators up this year. I didn't feel like they worked. I didn't feel like they worked very well for a um, strip grazing, intensive grazing situation. We used to use these fly predators when we had horses. And throughout the year, because the horses were just continuously grazed in this pasture or that back pasture, <clears throat> throughout the year, we would just dump the fly predators throughout the pasture. We'd sprinkle them throughout the pasture every 100 feet or so but then we'd put the majority of them up in the barn or around the barn. So they could attack flies laying eggs in the stalls. We had a manure pile going from where we'd muck out stalls. We would you know, leave the manure pile up by the, up by the barn before we take it down and spread it. So we'd put fly predators in there. <clears throat> I don't remember, because it's been forever since we've had horses out here. I don't remember if they worked, but that's how these things are designed. So I was just convinced that this intensive grazing, moving cows uh, type of of management that we're doing out here on this micro ranch. I was convinced that these fly predators just weren't going to work. I forgot to cancel over the winter. You, it, you know, I was set up on auto renew. I was getting the emails, but I just never got around to it. I totally forgot to cancel it. So I thought, well, looks like I'm going to be doing one more year of fly predators. But after this year, <clears throat> man, I, I'm, I'm kind of a believer. Um, and another reason that makes me say that is because I had a, a credit card, a, a bank card that tried to get stolen. Some dude tried to use it at a Walmart and like online at a Walmart in like El Paso or some some place. And so of course they flagged it. They called me, they canceled the card, and I forgot that I forgot that, that was the card I was using to pay for each individual shipment, you know, the week before the fly predators ship out. And I missed I missed a shipment and that that put us back by by the time I got around to getting my new card number to then I could give to them you know we were like three weeks um so by the time they showed up and was ready to hatch we had missed an entire month and that was in July and that is when we started having a big fly problem it directly correlated to that missed fly predator shipment my flies became horrible uh, and then I haven't been able to catch up since. That's the other thing that you absolutely have to do with these is you have to start early in the season before the flies show up. And then you have to continue uh, into the late fall after those first couple frosts because otherwise the flies will continue to reproduce and they'll all go someplace to overwinter. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of them die off from freezing, but a lot of them actually do find homes, you know, in a warm area and they basically just go dormant <clears throat> and wait until next year. So if you can knock out a good chunk of them before the winter, you're going to have that, that much fewer in the spring. The flies still are not as bad as they were in the years past. And they're not as bad as some of my neighbors are dealing with, but they were a lot worse than they were this year. So, um, yeah, I guess this is, this is one good thing about having a micro ranch, about having, uh, limited amount of <clears throat> land is something like this will work for us because 
I guess what I started getting at earlier in this video is a lot of people say fly predators don't work for a, a grass-based cattle operation. Well, those people are dealing with, you know, like what Greg Judy's got going on, you know, you know, 1,600 acres, 1,000 acres, 500 acres, heck, even, even, you know, 50 acres or 100 acres would be tough. You would have to get shipments of these fly predators multiple times a month, <clears throat> which would be very expensive. Now, what's the cost of animal health, performance, dealing with pink eye, dealing with other diseases? You know, you could end up paying that same price in vet bills and medication bills, but that's a lot of money coming out of your account every month for these little these little wasps because they only live about three weeks, unfortunately. So I think I think the way I, I heard it put by another company was you get like you basically get two or three fly control cycles. So you get you get the mamas that hatch, they lay their eggs, and then they fly and they lay another set of eggs if they can find good quality manure um, within a certain amount of time. So you get the mamas, they're hatching, and then the hatching's hatching basically, and then the life cycle just dies off. Uh, you know, fewer and fewer bugs every time, fewer and fewer wasps every time they hatch eventually leads to not enough wasps to make a difference. So that's why they really should be showing up uh, to your door at least once a month, if not once every three weeks. So if you have a large area to cover and you're constantly moving your cows, uh, it's just going to have to be every three weeks you get a new shipment and you go out and spread them because the predator, the fly predators aren't, aren't going to be able to keep up. So <clears throat> obviously only having two and a half acres in each pasture, it's a lot easier to control flies using these because the cows aren't getting that far away. Um, so I don't know, just, just to benefit to anyone out there who's been on the fence about, about trying these things, I would definitely suggest it. Now I do use other fly control methods and that's a video I'm gonna be doing um, here in the near future about what else I use for fly control. Any, any fly control method needs to be a, a tiered operation. You know, you need to have multiple attack angles, multiple attack types um, to make it as effective as possible. So there are other things that I do, but I am a, this year alone has made me a big believer in these fly predators if you do it correctly. I think I've got one more shipment coming after this. I've got this one and then another one in in the middle or to late September. Well, let's see, we're in September. I think it's late September. I've got my last shipment scheduled to show up so we can attack those flies one more time before it, before it starts freezing. So there's the weed eater eating a little bit of everything. All right, guys, if you have any questions about the fly predators or any suggestions um, on if you've used them and you've done things differently, uh, let me know.